I wish I knew. Welcome back to My Husband is My Best Friend. Shawnee Henderson speaks out after making comments about Shaq and her book, Undefeated. Hey, Shawnee. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm Melissa. I know we've never officially met, but I've been a fan for many years Mm -hmm. Um, and more than anything, a fan of your resilience. So I am excited to chat with you today and ask you a few questions. Of course, thank you so much. That's very sweet of you. Thank you, honestly. Yes, and and I mean it. You know how like you talk to people and everybody want to give you a compliment, but sometimes it's not real. Yeah. Like I feel like like I am not a celebrity, thankfully, but I can't imagine what it's like being in the public eye and having so much criticism constantly. And I I've just admired your ability to pivot from industry to industry. Um, so. Guys, please drop us some hearts as we welcome Miss Shawnee Henderson, and we are excited to talk about her new book today. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Um. Well, let me, I guess to answer your question, I think that I am kind of numb to it. You know what I mean? Like everybody's gonna have an opinion. They're gonna have a perspective. People nowadays love content without context. Right. It's a thing, right? So I think that I have literally become kind of immune to other people's opinions outside of people that I, I genuinely love and care about. I do I do care about them yeah. and, and representing who I am. I show up as a true me every day mm-hmm. and um, knowing that the people who love and care about me love and care about me and pull my coattail when I need to be pulled, when it needs to be pulled and... But everybody else is just noise. It, it honestly is just noise. And people, they but usually just want attention. They do. Oh, they attention <laughs> seekers. But I'm sure that that's not something that you automatically have. How did you build that muscle? Oh, Hi, Camila. Me? Sorry, I saw somebody I knew. Um, <laughs> um, no, no, I did not come with that. Trust me. I used to, I guess it was more Twitter then, like the, the commentary on on Twitter back in the day, like especially when I first got on basketball, did basketball lives, it was tough. Like I used to be in the comments, like going back and forth with people and just unnecessary drama that I caused myself, right? I was like, I don't even know these people. Why am I arguing with somebody I would never meet, <laughs> probably, you know? And if I have ever met them, they never say none of the stuff that they say online. Isn't right. that crazy? I mean, you never, those people never actually say anything to you. They just only, try to pull you online but um i i did used to participate i did used to let it hi miara it's my daughter um i did used to let uh it bother me i did i think i just it took probably a couple years for me to get i mean it's just like i never could explain it enough you know like people will watch tv and take that 42 minutes because that's what it ends up being and feel like that's your life Yep. And at the end of it, I'm just like, y'all don't know me, yeah. you know, and, and it just isn't, it's not worth the time and energy of trying to ex- o- explain it over and over again. Because by next year, it'll be a whole new heap of people that I have to explain it to again. So, <laughs> why so for the people who are on this live, who also probably don't know you and they just, you know, they read the headlines. What should we know about Shawnee? Like what, what is the one thing you're like, no, this, this is my legacy. This is who I am. And, you know, put a period on it um like i said i think i show up as my true self every day i don't i don't know that a lot of people can handle that um i i i don't alter for the crowd that i'm in i I really do genuinely stay stay myself even to the point of if i know i need to shut up i just shut up instead of having to alter who i am i'll just be quiet you know um that I, I'm pretty honest and sometimes people can't, I'm not going to say pretty honest. I think I have learned to um, filter my honesty because I, I am honest, never intentionally to, to hurt anybody's feelings, never malicious, never anything ill, 
like ill energy wise, but I'll just, you know, I'm very cut and dry. Like, I don't want to fluff and waste time. Like, if I don't like it, I don't like it. If I want to, you know, move on from something, I'll just say it. I'm just pretty, you know, people don't always receive that well because it's like, oh, you didn't, you know, you could have just entertained it. No, let's not waste time. <laughs> Life's too short. You know? That's ugly and I don't like it. So, can we do something <laughs> else? <laughs> Someone in the chat said you're also funny as hell. So, you know, obviously we are here to talk about your new book, which is entitled Undefeated. And, you know, being an entrepreneur, I've been in business for 12 years. So I know what it's like to, you know, have to have to make the decision to be undefeated because I don't yeah. think we just wake up and we are like, you know what? every day is a good day every day i'm gonna win because that's not reality right so right. how how do you become undefeated like what are some of the tools or the mindset that you know some entrepreneurs who are probably watching this how do we become undefeated like you i think knowing that every day you're not it's so many reasons for us to wake up and feel defeated right like so many but it's interesting because i was just well, not just sharing, but the other day, my husband was out of town and I was, I was at home, but I went to Target, right? I get to the parking lot and I have a meltdown in the car by myself, right? My husband just happens to call me, FaceTime me while I'm having this meltdown. And he's like, oh my God, like what's wrong? You know, so I'm answering and, and I'm trying to get it together. And I'm just like, it's just a really rough week it just really was a real rough week at that time and and what was like just staring up in my I don't know I just felt like I couldn't hold it anymore I'm not really a super emotional person I'll cry for everybody else you cry I'm gonna cry but like for me I'll, I'll just like you know tough it out and um so I I say all that to say like it was I felt defeated and he had to be like what's the name of your book like you you know the name of your book like you could push through this too you just got to figure out how right and i and i do this all the time like i'm constantly telling people this and it's so true but like when it happened to me i really was like allowing it to, to kind of consume me so i think that realizing there's so many reasons to to wake up and feel defeated mm -hmm. is the start like you know what i got a million reasons to feel like i'm beat up but what are those two three four five that will push through and and let you know that you can win so i what i did in that moment was start going through my phone and and picking out quotes and doing things where I constantly was looking at something positive, constantly looking at something that made me grateful, constantly looking at something that fed me in a positive way. Because sometimes you just have to talk to yourself yeah. about it. A lot of times, right? And realizing what that thing is, is you up, why, how you're allowing it to do that. So what I was allowing me was what I was allowing to eat me up. It was me allowing it to. I was making the decision yes. to be consumed in it as opposed to figuring out how I could stop letting that same thing get to me every time. Mm -hmm. So take that that challenge or whatever and make it an opportunity. But you got to be cognizant of it. Yeah. You got to like recognize it, look it in his face and be like, OK, this is a challenge. What am I going to do with it? How am I going to flip this thing into an opportunity? Because at the end of it all, it's a lesson. You just don't know the lesson when it's beating you up, but it's a lesson. So it's a mindset, I guess. Pretty much it's a mindset of you having to really push yourself have that conversation a lot of time we look for other people to help us through things and it's really you and a conversation you're going to have to have with yourself to to get over the hump i love that i love that. i've been talking to my friends a lot lately about replacing negative energy with the positive and it's because i heard a quote where um eckhart tolle basically said everything is about our reaction to the situation mm -hmm. it's never about the situation itself so we can react and judge a situation negatively and then we're carrying that negative energy but it's a choice to carry it every single day and you can choose to be undefeated or you can choose to sort of wallow in in that despair or wallow in that moment that made you sad so i absolutely love that and i think you know just being on social media for instance we 
we are constantly being fed negative mm -hmm. energy. And so you have to decide to be undefeated. So I, I just love the book title. Yeah. Um, earlier you said sometimes you have to push through. And I, I read in the book that you have to push for basketball wives because like there's so many versions of you. It's like Shawnee, the author, Shawnee, the executive <laughs> producer. This is a two part question. Number one, how do you how do you manage all the things like being a wife, being a mom, being a producer, being an author? And then beyond that, how do you make sure that you aren't um, being put in a box? Mm. Um, manage. I think I'll start with that one. So I think I manage it by just kind of prioritizing what's super important to me first. So my husband, my kids are a priority hands down. Anybody who works with me knows that they come first. Like they're always going to trump anything that's go going on. Um, for I, I need to be there for them. That's that's the joy of my life, right? It's just being there for for my husband and, and my kids. Um, so that's one. And then after that, I just prioritize what what's important right now, you know, I'm prioritizing this book and everything is, is undefeated. Everything is, is this book right now. So I think I just had to learn to manage what is important and have, and have a very soft, um, respectful gift called saying no. <laughs> <laughs> I will say no, ma'am, in a heartbeat, if it just seems, if it's just too much, I'm not going to overstretch my, I mean, just at this point in my life, I think I have tried to be a thousand places at one time for so long that I'm now in a place where I will politely decline. Yeah. And um, if, we, if it was for me, it was for me. And if it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I have no regrets, but I'm not going to overload myself at all. Um. It's T tell me why why writing undefeated right now like why the book and why why was now the timing well i think that to be honest i started that book a long time ago it's probably been named a million different things in so many versions of me at that time so i think i started the journey of writing a book probably in like two Ooh, probably 2000, maybe 18, 19. Oh. And I just kept getting scared. I really, um, I would get scared every time. Like, I just didn't, I don't know what I was scared of. I guess I was scared of sharing too much of my journey that would hurt other people, even if it was my truth, right? So I just, I, I just kept stopping. And then I'd be like, mm, let me just write a book on parenting, you know, like something real fluffy. Then I was like, that's kind of boring. You know, I mean, it, it could be a, a quick little help for a few people, but it was just, it just was, I wasn't being true to myself. So it was kind of eating at me. Mm -hmm. So I would put it down for like a year, put it down for a year and a half, say, forget it. I'm not doing it at all. And then um, I just, I think it was kind of during that I just was kind of like, let me, let me buckle down and just go back to writing notes and, you know, see where this goes. And I remember turning something into a, my publisher probably end of 2021 and my publisher was like okay this is real cute but you're not saying anything <laughs> like you're not really <laughs> you're telling us how you do what you do but how'd you get to that point how did you get to why you even think like that okay. so scrap that again and I think that writing this book this time almost became therapy mm -hmm. you know it was almost like I was like wow Oh, okay, I really did. That really did happen to me, or that really was my experience. And I, that experience is why I feel this way, or that ex that experience is why I moved this way. So, um, you know, I feel like I couldn't put all of my experiences, of course, in this one book. But it, it was, uh, it became therapeutic. And just the more I talked it out, the more I was like, I wish somebody had shared this type of stuff with me you know mm -hmm. prior to me being a grown-up or right when i became a grown-up i wish they had shared it with me so that maybe i um could have made some better choices yeah what's what's one of the key takeaways you want readers of the book to have when they when they pick up their copy um i want them to finish the book and feel inspired feel 
uh, empowered, encouraged, um, because again, it's taking opportunities, taking challenges and making them into opportunities, um, but being aware of it. And I think that, you know, it's, it's just, I was telling my husband after church yesterday that, I mean, God is so real because the timing of all of this was crazy, like how it all happened at a certain time and people were speaking into us that were like so on point with what was just happening in our lives with the book coming out, with just life in general, like it, it honestly was God's timing for this book to come out, for uh, everything that's happened in between to happen. It's it just, you know, I, I literally looked at him. I was like, you know, what? you can't play with God because he is so absolutely real and his timing is impeccable, whether we get it or not. But when you get it, you're like, oh, I was over <laughs> here questioning, upset, crying and, you know, asking why. But here it is. And it just hits you in the face and you just know, like, OK, all right. I ain't going to question you next time. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you have trusted God's timing and obviously God has covered your life and, and allowed you to create something so beautiful for, for you and your family. And hopefully for millions, I'm crossing my fingers for millions of readers yes. um, to be transformed. Um, where can we find Undefeated? Well, you can go on premierbooks.com. They're selling the book. You can go to shawneehenderson.com. Of course, you can go to Target and Amazon and all the easy spots for those of us that like to do online shopping. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anywhere books are sold, you can pretty much find the book. Thankfully, I walked in the airport the other day and saw it in the bookstore. I just was like, it was, a, I, it was the craziest feeling, but felt so good. So... Yeah, Premier Books and, and ShawneeHenderson.com. I'd like, to, I'd like to push folks there. Thanks for tuning in to My Husband is My Best Friend.